Ah, I really enjoyed this movie because... Stoplight Spoilers is coming to you. Bringing you spoilers and movie reviews. With Jake and Isaiah as your hosts as they're driving home. Dude, what's up, Isaiah? How you doing? Hi, Jacob. I'm doing pretty good. Other than allergies. Yeah, I hear that. You sound a little bit stuffed up, but... We'll still get the show on the road. Literally. <laughs> Good pun. Yeah. So this week... I, I don't know what the name of it is. I'm it's sure. okay. So this week, we watch Birth of the Dragon. A story about how Bruce Lee was in America and founded Jiku No, which is kind of fun. I really enjoyed the movie. I did Myself. too. I, I mean... Taekwondo movies aren't my thing. No. But I really did enjoy them. Like, Kung Fu, I've always enjoyed them. And I enjoy, you know, Jackie Chan, some of his older stuff. And I have watched uh, Bruce Lee's movies and stuff. And uh, it was very entertaining. Like, it, it definitely took me back. Did he do? It took me back. The War, was that? He's in a few movies. Talk about uh, Bruce Lee? Yeah. Yeah. The War, does that... Oh, no, that's Jet Li. Oh. I can't think of a Bruce Lee movie that I've seen. But. Um, the names elude me, but I've seen them. There's one that was a, a movie about him again, like Bruce Lee himself sort of thing. And uh, this one was really fun. I liked, uh, I think the actor they picked, they did pretty good um, as far as casting for it and stuff. One thing I would like to point out that I, I really enjoyed was the slight cheesy kung fu movie feeling occasionally. I love the cheesy movie they were filming. It wasn't, but the thing was is that, yeah, now that, that one was, was really that was funny. traditional. That, that was, was traditional really cheese. That's like spaghetti westerns. Yeah. That's a spaghetti kung fu. That was really um, funny. No, that was, that was very good, but I like how this one it did touch on those but elements like production wise you know, filming, cinematography on the sets Everything was really solid. Yeah. And there was just moments of cheesiness harking back to traditional I wonder, Kung Fu martial art movies. Like, because he was really douchey. He was a character, Bruce right? Bruce Lee? Yeah. yeah he, I he wonder was how a true the character that, Like, in real life, if, like, he came across like that. I don't know. Like, it's very possible. I, I didn't, His younger self. Yeah, I I've never studied him. But, I mean, it makes sense... It's a fun story, nonetheless. Yeah. You know? How much um, liberty do they take? I yeah. So let's just go ahead and just talk about the plot just a little bit. You've got the Kung Fu Master, Shaolin Monk, Kung Fu Master of China, comes to America. And washes dishes. And washes dishes. Very elegantly. Though. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Um, but Bruce Lee hears of his venture to the States. And is curious as to why he's there, assuming he wants to fight. This guy is a traditionist and does feel that Kung Fu, as a um, way of life, if you will, should remain with the Chinese people. He does kind of change his view as he goes along, but that is originally what he states. Yeah. Bruce Lee feels that Kung Fu should be for everyone. In a, in a way to kick ass is what he says. Literally. If you meet somebody on the streets, you can take care of business. Like, it's just what he's what he's all about. So, it was kind of fun to see the traditionalist approach coming to the States and questioning the upcoming generation, if you will. Right. Um, but that's essentially starts off the whole movie, and then there's a lot of build-up to the fight. Which is epic. Um, I thought it was really fun. For the film, for what it was, I think it held a tone. I don't yeah. have issues with it. I'm not overly excited, but I was entertained for sure. Right, that makes sense. I have to uh, go ahead and say that I enjoyed it a lot to where I, well, I am excited. Like, it's kind of... I really enjoyed this movie because it just gave me a real big nostalgia feeling. And that's, it just was fun for me. Like, I've never practiced martial arts. 
But I've always Whatever. enjoyed the film. Yes, you did. We oh, did I did do Tai Chi with you. You're right. You're right. We did do Tai Chi. We could balance our chi. Yeah. But uh, it was it was a really fun movie, and I don't know, like I don't really know things that we can talk about. There was some just really fun stuff in the movie. But we need a really crappy movie. They're so much easier to talk about with their crap. Well, they're easy to pick apart and make fun of, but um, in this one, like it was. It was thoroughly entertaining, and I'm obviously you can tell by the way I've talked about this podcast thus far. I'm absolutely a green light. If you have any interest in martial arts in any way, you're so silly that you're driving so slow, and I go to go around you, and then you're like goofy dude over there. I don't think you need to. I, I mean, I get your caveat there, but mar- it's a good arts, movie. Period. It's a good. I think yeah. It, yeah. And it's a good story. The story held up. And now it is not, it is not, does not claim to be based off of a true story. It does, however, take a story in history to inspire the film. Right. So, you know, some How much of, stuff, of it's true? Probably very minimal, but. Yeah, I mean, as far as being historically accurate. But it's still a super duper fun. It's so weird. Right. <laughs> it was still super duper fun to me. Um, but the fighting sequences were all superb. Like, every single one of them to me held up. They were super enjoyable. I really liked, um... I like the, the tournament scene where he's just so cocky. He, he was a cocky little he Puts his arms out after every... This victory. is the world champion of uh, karate. Yeah. Take it easy on me. Yeah. You are the world champion of karate. <laughs> and he just pones him like it was just nothing. So I mean, you know, a practitioner of, of kung fu. I think it's fun that uh, I can't Jackman, whatever his 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 whole name was. I can't remember exactly. But the Shaolin monk guy, when he came over there and he was explaining to Bruce that he is in his own way. Like his technique is poor. He had he is skilled. But he's essentially hit a wall, is the way I was taking it, and is incapable of getting past his limitations. And he does help him see past his personal limitations right. and grow. And that's essentially his goal, was to hopefully help. He knew. Like, that's the thing. In this one, he knew that there was no way to keep Kung Fu from going to the so he wanted it to be as pure as it could possibly be. And he knew that Bruce Lee would be the vessel that would make it a big deal for the world. Right. And at least that's the way it came across in the film. And I really liked the fact that he wasn't going to say, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. It was more, it's going to happen, so I'm going to help make it as best as possible. Right. To help give Bruce Lee a sense of enlightenment to help, help him see which then you led... See, go ahead. You see his character, Bruce's character, kind of develop in the film because he's so egocentric that he heard this guy came into town and it was all about... Wanting to fight. Any he time. Like, it wasn't... The guy wasn't... He was there because he almost killed a guy and yeah. he was just trying to, like... What are they Trying to it? balance his chi, essentially. Yeah. He, he was in balance. His soul was in balance. And uh, he was—he was, Bruce, just, he was just, there on his own pilgrimage. I mean, essentially, that, yeah, he, he was Bruce in Chinatown. Just, Bruce just started there, there for him, yeah. just to start, just to start mess. And and uh, he was so cocky. And I, I would like to think that Bruce was that way. Yeah. Bruce Lee was that way. And this did help affect a change in his life. That's—it was a fun way it was written. So and this is inspiring me to do one thing. Watch another movie of Bruce Lee. Well, right. there was a Bruce Lee in this one. I feel like but this is Birth of the movie. Dragon. I think that well, there's one Enter the Dragon. I title. I'm well, they referenced one of the Dragon movies. Which one did they? Like ten years before. Nine years. Maybe that was Enter the Dragon. Nine years before Enter the Dragon. You're right. I think that's might be what they said. So. <sighs> Red light challenge. Bonus round. I should call a fun fact or question. A little fun fact for you. 
a little trivia. A little trivia. But uh, as far as uh, the movie itself, as it plays out, you know, Bruce Lee does become enlightened by the Shaolin monk. And the slaved women were freed. Yeah, the slave women were freed. And uh, it was good. It actually talks about this event is what changed the direction of Bruce Lee's practice of Kung Fu to five years after this current incident was when he debuted Jeet Kune Do, which was his version of yeah. Kung Fu, which is definitely widely used today. It's a very widely used discipline in martial arts. So it was, uh, that's kind of fun. It was a nice little thing there. I, I know I, I knew I knew it, but I'd forgotten about it, knowing that he was. I had no idea. Yeah. It's just information. My youth leader, he was big into martial artists, and he enjoyed pretty much anything martial arts. And in particular, he loved um, not Chuck Norris. Oh, guys, I know you guys are listening to it right now thinking, oh, I know who you're talking about, and I can't even think about it. <laughs> Fire in the Mountain. There were so many stuff. Under Siege. You would know. There's you, no way I'm helping you. You know who I'm talking about if I could get it out. I, I, I think you'd have to know, but maybe not. Anyway. Anyway, uh, I feel like it's long. He really liked him. Cool story. <laughs> I wanted to talk about this trailer that I saw, and I can't remember what the trailer was. What was it about? Uh, it had some famous people in it. <laughs> famous people? Okay. Like, cool. big name. Um, I can't even put a face on it. Male that I'm trying to think of. Golly, it's so silly. But there was the other one that... Thor Ragnarok. That one was show that pretty one. cool. And, Person, then, and people are going to go see that anyway, regardless of what Happy, about. yeah, yeah, they don't care. Happy Death Day. That was oh, cool. that was an interesting. It was like Groundhog's Day, All but death. And, with. and uh, it was, it looks cool. I'm, I'm down to see I it. I think it's going to be really cheesy. It'd yeah. possibly not be good. Yeah. But. It'll be entertaining. I think it looks entertaining. It's a fun twist on Groundhog Day. Yeah. I like it showed that the doctor like could see that there's trauma happening so like part of it was sticking yeah. like her yeah. the stress of it it's a really it interesting cool. plot I, as, as the trailer progressed though I have to admit I, they I played watching wait. it God it's wait. just a, a lot of plot seemed to kept coming out and that is not of it that's over a month away they already released that, that much, much of the plot. It, it's just like you know I feel that I must be a minority because if they make trailers like this to try to get people to the movies, I think it's better, like, the teaser trailer originally for 10 Cloverfield Lane. I think it got a lot of people in the cinema that then maybe had mixed feelings about the movie because the trailer was so enticing to where I was like, what this happened. is going on yeah. in this movie? I want to watch the movie because that way I can figure out what the heck happened in this trailer. Can we get better trailer makers out there? Because there are good ones out there. There are. Like, teaser trailer for that movie was superb. Um, let's say one that wasn't good, because you know which one I'm talking about already. I can't think of the we name. We watched this year. The Mummy. Oh, that one too, but we didn't watch the other movie that I'm thinking of because it showed so much. Oh, yeah, The Free State of Jones. Yes. What no. the heck? It was the entire Every film plot the trailer. twist there was. was like, if, so your, if your movie is two hours long, and your trailer is almost three minutes long. Show it It's every too much. Plot twist. Why is your movie two hours if I watch the whole film in three minutes? Yeah, I don't. Anyway, but the mummy was definitely the same way. Yeah. You watch the trailer. Major plot points revealed in the that trailer. one part where he crashes in the plane and comes back to life in the morgue. Had they left it out, that would have been such a fun thing to happen for me personally it seems like they just don't spend enough time thinking about how to play those out it also might be that it has absolutely nothing to do with the director and or anybody else that's associated with the film who has somebody the who does it put stuff together and with Morgan you remember that one 
they did that one was based off of computer intelli- or artificial intelligence computer is the one that made the trailer from all of the footage. Uh, oh, you did tell me that. Yeah. Which is a very fun idea. Wasn't it? And I it don't was, remember the trailer. Well, it was, it was a fairly odd, suspenseful, but just weird trailer. Yeah. Because they were going off of all of the things that are considered society scary. And it was trying to, to go off of that and create a trailer from the footage. And I found it to be entertaining. It's a fun idea. It was neat. Considering the movie was about artificial intelligence. But, uh, so, yeah, you know, this movie, I absolutely give it a green light. Um, it was super entertaining. I really like how much fun the fight scenes were like there's it's legit fight scenes oh I'll say that you know what I mean yeah like it was just so much of it it wasn't they didn't lie and there was a good little bit of story a small bit of romance like saving the I had, that actually bal- or I, I thought that a little bit because sometimes they throw those in there into movies it was okay I just sometimes I don't need that and I had like cheesy romance. Agreed. I don't always need it in this one because it was just so simple. Yeah. Like it was she's being wronged. I would like to help her out. And it was they didn't show anything else past that as far as romantic. That's what I will give it credit for. It's like when they first started I was like dang it don't do this. Like don't (laughs) make a complete separate story based around this. Like so they did keep it limited and I will give them that. I don't I, I guess they needed something to cause additional drama. They did. Um, I also think that it felt slightly heavy of a focus on the American dude at right. times. Right, yeah. So to give this movie a fault, it was kind of like watching um, that. That is the a fault Squad. of the movie, I think, yeah. because this movie is supposed to be... Birth of the Dragon, which it did. It covered, it and did. It, it was good. It's just... It well, was kind of like I said, like Suicide Squad was more like Will Smith's movie. Like, yeah. Deadshot's movie. Like, it just was too heavy. And I'm glad you feel that way, too, because I I thought that in the movie, I was like, we are really focused on this guy. This one white dude. Who, is he a real, like, do you think he's a real person? A je- or Dutch? In Bruce Lee's life? Uh, yeah, I, I don't doubt it. I think it's, you know, pulled from the name they probably changed and stuff. But I'm sure there was a person that was in that position. Yeah. Now, it makes me wonder if part of this fighting, because we know that they had a fight. That's historical. Did they actually go to a place and free a whole bunch of essentially slaves, indentured servants yeah, that would never be freed? Yeah. Did that really happen? I really want to know this. Did that really happen? And did he, the white guy, was he just the messenger? Was he truly the messenger? Just went back and forth between these two grown adults? He, he wants to talk to you. He was a middleman. Well, you know, if you figure back then, there wasn't too I much did. as far as connectivity. Like, I there did were cell phones, keep or cell phones and stuff, not cell phones, but telephones. I, ke- I kept like, why did they call? And I was like, well, never mind. We're in the 60s or something. And they had phones, we, but it wasn't as... Were they in the 60s? Yeah, 64 was when this okay. one happened. And then uh, that's when he... The birth of Jeet Kune Do was in 69. Gotcha. So it was a five-year period between that... Him becoming enlightened and developing the style. I'm glad you felt that way. I don't think it like was detrimental, but it, no, I think but it, it was a little. Heavy. It is a mark against it. Like to find something to have actually fault. That was one thing that I did find fault with it. I wonder if it's a slight bit of. I know it's American hate audience, it, but whitewashing. Yeah, like, yeah, to make it more relatable. To the, yeah, and, and I don't. I can't. Well, I wouldn't go to as far as say why watch it because he's no way no, to start. No, they didn't make brute like no. they didn't make him do. But they white, Americanized and guess, did. They did a little. Heavy. I'm sure. I bet you it was not received well overseas. Then. Do you think? I bet you. I don't know. Had an issue. But if you think about it, let's say historically, um, China has had a lot of issues with Bruce Lee, and I'm just saying, I'm pulling it something here. But let's just say that. In general, Bruce Lee is not accepted there yeah. because of his work in America. They wouldn't accept the movie anyway. Right. But that's just me assuming. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, I have absolutely no idea. It's just mere speculation. If you'd like to let us know what the actual legitimate legitimacy, legitimacy of the statement is, you can hit us up on Facebook. It is merely speculation. Instagram, Twitter. 
And that is that stoplight spoiler. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's fairly easy to find, really. It is. Once we got it fixed. Stop. 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 I, I, stop. stop. So yeah, stop. I spoiler spoilers is. is, is. <laughs> Stop yeah. Ike Spoilers is... Uh, it's anyway. probably still messed up somewhere. So, uh, until next week, this is Jake, and I'll see you then. Uh, this is Isaiah Greenlight. I give it an 8, and I'm out. Because <laughs> I didn't even... All right, bye. Hashtag sponsor us.